July 7, 2927. Nexus, Private Jacob Rodriguez. Jacob could barely remember how the war had started. It had been nearly 100 years ago when the first shots were fired. All he knew now was that if he stuck his head out of the foxhole he currently called home, it would be hit by a bolt of plasma and turn to molten mush. Needless to say, Jacob, and by extension all of humanity were teetering on the brink of destruction. The trench networks on Hill 121, the fallback line of the fallback line, was all that stood between 100 million panicked civilians and the uncaring plasma fire of the Anjari Empire. As Jacob looked up into the ash-choked sky, he reminisced on days of relative calm. Thirty years ago, Jacob was only seven years old. He grew up within the confines of New Haven and frequently visited Hill 121 to play around in the long grass and stare at the stars. Of course, back then it wasn't called Hill 121. It was just Admiral Tyrus Memorial Park, and it was beautiful. Filled with wildflowers and trees native to Nexus, the planet he called home and crown jewel of the human republic. A strange beeping noise forced him out of his daydreaming. At his feet lay a glowing orange plasma grenade. At his feet lay a glowing orange plasma grenade. Without time to second-guess his actions, Jacob propelled himself out of his foxhole like a coiled spring. A massive boom shook the ground and filled Jacob's ears with an incessant ringing sound. Something hot grazed his back, and Jacob scrambled into a nearby defilade for cover. To Jacob's delight, he saw his squad's radio operator Nick lying there beside him. Nick, call in artillery on the valley below our hill. Danger close. Jacob's ears were still ringing, so he didn't expect to hear a reply. Instead, he crept up to the top of the defilade, peeking his rifle over the berm and squeezing off a few shots at the four armed freaks charging his hill. He only managed to down two of the well over a dozen aliens he saw, rushing his position before white-hot plasma bolts tore through the air next to him. Diving for cover once again, Jacob realized that Nick hadn't moved in the entire time it took for him to ask for artillery support until he dove back down. Nick was dead, and a fist-sized hole had been burned clean through his radio set. Shit. Jacob muttered to no one in particular. His ears were ringing so bad he still couldn't even hear himself speak. Jacob crawled over Nick's body, offering a silent prayer to whatever God would listen to ensure the poor man's well-deserved rest in the afterlife, and took up a new position behind a large rock. Jacob took a moment to survey the scene and figure out how to approach his current predicament tactically. Just from his quick glance around, he could tell there were at least twenty Anjari warriors closing on his position. To make matters worse, a large contingent of Anjari vehicles were massing in the valley below. Jacob's best guess was that there were well over 500 Anjari in or around his position on Hill 121, and based on the dropships he could see in the distance, the odds were only going to get worse from here on out. While scouring the land for better intel, the sheer scale of the destruction around him fully materialized in his mind. Where 120-foot trees once proudly stood, and wildlife freely roamed only a month ago, now only mud and blood-filled craters remained. This planet was Jacob's home. Not only that, this hill was practically Jacob's backyard. Of all that life that once flourished here, none remained. Not the slightest hint of nature could be found on Hill 121. Jacob was proud of the fact that they'd put up a hell of a fight and stalled the Anjari for over a day now. Sadly, that resistance meant that the hill had been pounded to hell, and back, the five-square-kilometer area had been slammed by over 15,000 artillery shells of Anjari make for the past day. No inch left untouched by the careless destruction those shells wrought. Jacob regained some of his hearing, and began desperately calling out on his handheld radio. This is PVT Jacob of the 27th, any remaining human forces on Hill 121, please respond. For a terrible five seconds, Jacob waited with no response. I repeat, any remaining human forces on Hill 121, please respond. To Jacob's horror, there was no one left to respond. He was all that stood between a rapidly advancing Anjari kill squad and the 100 million civilians trapped in New Haven. 
After looking to a hastily repaired radio tower miraculously still standing on the hill, Jacob knew what needed to be done. Jacob placed his sights squarely on an Anjari commander, glistening blue robes designating his rank to his subordinates, demanding respect and portraying honor. Conveniently for Jacob, they made a damn good target too. One squeeze of the trigger was all it took for the commander to fall limp. The sudden death of their commander stunned the rest of the nineteen Anjari warriors for only a second, but that was all Jacob needed to rush to cover behind a concrete barricade nearby. He had moved up another couple of meters toward the radio tower. By his estimation, Jacob was now only forty meters from the tower's transmission panel. Jacob picked a HE grenade off of a dead soldier's vest. Jacob hoped the dead woman's soul would understand why he wouldn't take the time to look for her dog tags. Jacob already knew if he was successful he wouldn't make it out of here to report her dead in the first place. Instead, he'd honor her memory by chucking her grenades downhill. Judging on the screams alone, he'd hit his mark and took down at least three advancing Anjari. Another quick burst of gunfire, and Jacob cut down another two warriors. He felt confident to make a mad dash to the nearest cover now, only getting his eyebrows slightly singed by a close-passing plasma bolt in return. Just thirty more meters. Jacob was shortly distracted by the grisly scene all around him. Some poor infantry grunt had been hit with some sort of anti-material rifle. Without going into too much detail, the poor soul was reduced to simply painting the ground red in a terrible ten-meter radius on and around Jacob's cover. Their death would not be in vain. Jacob couldn't let that happen. Jacob shot off the last of his current magazine's ammo this time downing at least five Anjari for good and wounding at least that many more. This gave him some much-needed leeway, and he was able to advance a full twenty meters before the plasma fire resumed. Jacob reached for another mag to reload his weapon, but realized he had fully run out of ammo. Wasting no time, Jacob threw his rifle to the ground and pulled out his sidearm. He only had to kill one of the warriors before the few remaining decided to cut their losses and run away, leaving their wounded crying in the mud-soaked foxholes they now cowered in. Jacob felt pity for the poor souls, until he remembered they were hell-bent on the total eradication of humanity as a species. Such goals often put a damper on said species' ability to empathize with their attacker. It also didn't help that he could see the massed armor in the valley below beginning to rapidly close on his position. Jacob broke himself free of his empathy, and rushed toward the control console of the radio tower. He knew exactly what needed to be done. Slamming his fist on the transmit button and screaming at the top of his lungs, Broken Arrow! Broken Arrow! This is PVT! Jacob of the 27th Hill 121 is lost! Enemy armor advancing rapidly! Hit the hill and South Valley with everything you've got! Jacob also made sure to transmit the video logs from the radio station's security feed, as well as his body camera footage of the fighting. He hoped it would give the artillery gunners a better bead on enemy concentrations, as well as serve as a final goodbye to his family, if his family was still alive. Jacob forced that thought out of his mind and spoke for the last time in his life. Rachel, if you ever see this, tell Jonah and Sarah that Daddy loves them. Mom, Dad, wherever you are, stay safe, I love you, tell everybody. A massive bolt of plasma, only capable of being fired from a tank's main gun, slammed into the radio tower directly next to Jacob. As the searing heat of plasma gave way to the creeping darkness of death, Jacob thought only of better days. Days where he could breathe in the clean air, marvel at the wildlife, stroll through parks, and enjoy life with his family. He died a hopeful man, hopeful that one day his children could regain the wonders of humanity, now lost to war.